the murder novel I wrote became a bestseller. But now, I must face the consequences of inspiring a serial killer. I had always been hesitant to write a genre that involved murder and violence. My sort of literature was always meant to target a family-friendly audience. However, the lack of sales had driven me to desperation. So I tore my boundaries and published a book titled The Butterfly Murders. It started with the news of my wife's pregnancy and the stack of incoming bills to pay. She was recently fired from her job and rendered unable to find a new one in maternity. So the responsibility fell onto me. To this day, I am surprised that such a wonderful woman chose to endure a life of a man who can't guarantee fortune. Writing was always my passion. Before the expecting of my child, I did not exert as much effort into my other writing until now. Perhaps it was a combination of motivations and pressure that drove me, but even so, I could not find a publisher willing to take any of my dumb children's books. In desperations, I broke my code. Not for long, I did find a publisher, and before I knew it, my book went bestseller. I began to realize that people were naturally fascinated by violence. It's no wonder that the news is always updating us with war despite the fact that statistics are telling us that we're getting closer and closer to world peace. But writing about a few murders wasn't enough. I had to be creative. People want ritualistic murders. People want creative murderers. People want murder to be an art. What made my novel good was that I made my character a serial killer and artist in my book. I vividly described the styles of murder. Being a butterfly collector, his victims met the demise similar to his collection. One morning, my wife and I watched the news as always, expecting the same old celebrity garbage and complicated pol politics. The headline surprised us. A butcher was found dead in his own freezer. Forensic experts added that he was drugged. That sounds like your novel, my wife said. Some butterfly collector knocked out and freezed their specimens before mounting them, right? I guess, I replied. The news was shocked, but if you lived long enough, you would see and hear weird sayings. While murder will always be a part of the news, there will always be a strange outliner. But it didn't stop there. A week later, another victim, a woman, found lifeless on the streets. She was reported missing a few days prior. The cause of death was determined to be due to freezing. But what's at the media buzz? When a victim was found inside a museum of moth and butterfly displays, the body was spread flat on it with his arms and legs bolted to a huge wooden board. Just like the previous victims. The victim died from freezing. At this point, suspicion on a serial killer on the loose came about. As more similar deaths get reported, people could not help but point out that they were similar to the natures to my novel. Naturally, I was investigated by the police, and I could only shake my head with, I don't know. The police then asked if there was any way to predict the serial killer. I remembered the potential victims would find a piece of butterfly net along their possessions. This is a serial killer's way of symbolizing their capture. The police thanked me before leaving. I felt rather guilty. For once in my life, I have accomplished something great, even earning a decent living for my family, and I ended up creating a monster. It's not your fault, dear, my wife told me in bed. Sure it is, I said. The serial killer took my story as a murder manual. That wasn't your atten intention. It might as well be. I didn't want to write it in the first place. But you wrote it for our child, remember? I was stunned. Despite the gruesome content of my work, it really was, in fact, dedicated to the future I wanted to protect. I cried a bit. Do you remember how we met? 
Yes. She blushed a bit. We were in high school at the time. Then we started sharing our interests, I continued. I wanted to be a school teacher while you wanted to become a writer for children literature. We had common goals, I smiled. To make it to make a better world for children. We laughed. I guess a real start is to We had a common goal, I smiled. To make make a better world for children. We both laugh. I guess our real start to that goal is with our child. I said she yawns a bit. It's a boy. We ended our conversation with a goodnight kiss. I had trouble sleeping. I dreamt that I was in the point of view of the killer. The image of, of drugging a victim and shoving him in, into a freezer felt real. I could feel the coldness, which woke me up, was sound asleep. I looked around the room and noticed that the windows was open. No wonder it felt cold. Wait, didn't I lock the window? Immediately, I turned on the lights. Immediately, I turned on the lights and grabbed a baseball bat. Honey, what's wrong? I hear my wife waking up. The window was opened. I went around and inspected the door of the house. Nothing seems to have been taken. And there's no signs of intrusion. Dear, my wife spoke. I think I just left the window open to beat the heat, that's all. I went back to bed, feeling reassured. But as I passed by, looking at some of our belongings on the bedroom table, I saw a torn piece of a net, a butterfly net. I called the police. The next day, we had a co few cops guarding our house. I had told that cops were also watching over areas with freezer rooms, just in case citizens were also warned not to go out at night. I later contributed more info to the police regarding my fictional character's actions in relations to what the serial killer might do. Also, I told them, he might resort to suffocating his victims if he can't find a way to freeze them. My wife later dragged me into another room. Dear, my wife whispered, that wasn't in your book. What? Your character never did that. I pondered a bit. You're right. Didn't he wind up getting caught and ambushed as he tried to drug a still-living victim? He wouldn't want to repeat his mistakes, I replied. Her eyes twitched. I just know how he thinks. Do you think your reading readers would know that? I... I'm not sure. More days pass, and there was no murder so far. I was still having those nightmares. There, I saw what the serial killer sees. And each time I woke up, I contribute more to the investigations, sometimes stating info that wasn't released to the public. I started growing anxious. Soon, my wife took notice. Are you alright? I asked. I'm fine, I replied. A, bu a butterfly flew inside our house, catching our attention. I caught it by the wings and it stared at it and stared at it. Are you sure you're that you're alright? I ignore her. Put it down. I heard her say, but I continued to be fascinated by the creature. Snap out of it, she slaps me. I dropped the butterfly, breaking its wings. I was suddenly overwhelmed by ang with anger. I grabbed her by the neck. A few objects fell during the struggle, creating a ruckus. The police busted into our room and fired a stun gun at me. What's going on? Heard her cry as I faint. All the evidence pointed at me. Fingerprints, DNA samples, everything. The police even found a frozen butterfly in my fridge. Tell us everything, the interrogator ordered. I confess that the novel I wrote was based on nightmares. On a series of nightmares I had quite a while now. Even before I got married, initially I started with my old, with just plain old massacres. But each time it repeated, new elements were added, giving it more complexity which later inspired me to write my novel. I was he hesitant to publish it. The idea was always in mind, but it was only until desperation came over that I decided to release it. When asked about the series of murders that I supposedly committed, I replied that I only remember them as dreams. The interrogator pointed out that the fictional character I wrote 
dreams of having a normal family, a loving wife and child, was all he wanted. The interrogation ended and eventually I had to wait for my sentence. The ordeal was growing too much for me. The most painful thought was that of leaving my wife behind. She was expected to give birth this month and I may miss it. Reality begins to blur as I try to block out the pain. As they take a me away, I can't help but reflect on my identity. Am I the writer who dreamt about being a serial killer? Or am I the serial killer who dreamt of being a writer?